Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every weekend, same time, same station. Join us. And if you are getting something out of this, and I hope you are, that is one of my goals for you, is to help you understand that you have the ability to change your health. You know, sometimes that people, people just don't get it. I think people think it's up to the doctor to change my health. It's up to the drugs I'm taking to change my health. But it's your choice to be healthy. And reasonably, you may not know that, so you eat what you want because it puts out the hunger, you feel happy, your blood sugar level stabilizes, Otherwise, if your blood sugar level spikes and it drops too low and you don't eat something, you'll feel terrible, you'll feel crappy, you'll feel ugly, you'll feel irritable, you'll feel angry. So you eat. But if you ate better, you might get rid of all of your diseases and get rid of your drugs. Now, I'm not saying go off your drugs. I'm not telling you to drop your drugs. The doctor has given you those prescriptions for a reason. And I would suggest that if you want to get off your drugs, then change your lifestyle, change what you're doing. You can't do the same thing over and over and over every day, the same diet, the same kinds of foods, the standard American diet, and do nothing, no exercise, no, just don't take care of yourself. You're not going to have a very good lifestyle. It's going to be full of illnesses, cold and flu, allergies, arthritis, type 2 diabetes, all kinds of conditions that nobody wants. We have been on this earth for over 3 million years, and drugs have been around for about 100 to 150 years, and we're sicker than ever. Drugs don't make us healthy. They prevent us from dying, which is great, and they make it livable. They make our quality of life somewhat better, but we still have those aches and pains and diabetes and cardiovascular diseases and heart attacks and strokes and, and cancer, and it's all spiking, getting worse, and they're finding more of these diseases in younger people, in their teens and 20s and 30s, when these used to be old age diseases. That means that as we got older, we had some of these conditions. We don't have them as much and more in younger people. It's spiking in young people because young people are eating more junk than ever before. What's it going to be like in another 25 or 50 years? In fact, they said by the year 2060, everybody in the United States, if we stay on the same trend, will be obese. Everybody will be grossly overweight. And with that, you have all kinds of unhealthy conditions. The more fat you have, the more imbalance of your hormones. Men who are grossly overweight or even overweight, all those fat cells release estrogen. Not testosterone, but estrogen. And also inflammation. And the more chronic inflammation, the more harmful conditions we have. I've seen people change their lives in, in six, to eight, 6 to 12 weeks by changing their diet. You can't get by unless you change. We need change. Now, some fight against it. Some don't care. But if you don't care, then don't complain about your aches and pains and your type 2 diabetes and all the drugs you're on and all the side effects that come from the drugs you're on that you may need more drugs to treat the side effects of the first drugs. I want you healthy. I was in bad, bad shape when I was younger. And today I feel better than I have ever felt in my life. That's the way we should be getting. As we get older, we get better. I want to die young, but at a very old age. And we can do that. So, just by listening to the show, 
I'm trying to give you ideas to be healthy. You know, people consider that that eating meat causes cancer. I just did a blog on how meat is not responsible for cancer. There are no studies whatsoever that proves meat causes cancer. Even on even processed meats do not cause cancer. So we can learn from these studies and the science. In fact, there have been over 800 studies trying to figure out if meat causes cancer. And like 600, excuse me, 760 said inconclusive, inconclusive does not show either way. But doctors still try to promote the fact that red meat causes cancer. And you should not eat the, you should eat the Mediterranean diet because they don't eat meat. But they drink olive oil, a half a cup, quarter of a cup a day, which is one of the most potent natural medicines in the world. They drink wine every day. And wine is also a very wonderful food in moderation. They eat more fruits and vegetables. They do not eat sugar. So it's not just the red meat. It's their lifestyle. Their lifestyle promotes. They walk more. I've seen um, women go to the grocery store, to the marketplace on their bike. I've seen them walk to the marketplace, carrying two big bags home. Elderly people. I once stopped on the street in Italy, and a woman was walking up a, a hill with two big bags of groceries. And I kind of make a motion to her that if I could carry her bags up for her. And she refused. Well, maybe she didn't understand my intentions. Maybe she thought I was going to rip her off. But anyway, they, they don't want help. They're used to walking to the grocery store. They're, they're used to walk into the marketplace. We want everything easy. We're too lazy. We want everything given to us. But it, t- it takes discipline. It takes sacrificing. If you want health, you can have it. I don't care how old you are or what conditions you're fighting, you can improve dramatically in every condition. And today we're going to talk about a variety of topics. We're going to talk about dental health for dogs, for oral health. We're going to also talk about cholesterol, which is one of my pet topics. It's not cholesterol, but we'll actually talk what is the most dangerous fat. And we'll talk about Parkinson's disease. And now they find that it may start in the gut. These are the most common nutrient deficiencies we'll discuss today. And you know that night owls, well, they're not really owls, they're night people. But night owls get more diabetes than those that get a good night's sleep. Now, here's a question I get all the time. Should olive oil be refrigerated? Then we'll talk about Greek mountain tea. A weed that grows in the Mediterranean countries, particularly in Greece. And we'll talk about an unusual headache, which is a warning side, sign rather, of a stroke. So let's talk about some of these topics today and see if we can learn more. Well, dogs are most likely to have dental problems. Any dog can get dental disease, periodontal disease, depending on their diet. Individual body chemistry, and of course, dental care from their human companions. Dental care from their human companions. Yes. Periodontal disease is accumulation of dental plaque and tartar causing inflammation, itis, periodontitis. Plaque contains 200 to 300 different types of bacteria. And if you have any opening in your mouth, like a cavity or a very receding gum line, 
and these bacteria can enter the bloodstream. It's one of the major causes in dogs and humans for heart disease, the bacteria in your mouth. 200 to 300 different types of bacteria are found in our mouth. And while I'm talking about dogs right now, I also want to remind you that you can make as much difference in your oral cavity as well. But dogs are more prone to dental problems, including breeds with short and narrow muscles. Muzzles. Not muscles. Muzzles. And small, close-fitting teeth, like boxers, pugs, or poodles. One of the most common nutritional supplements for dogs and humans for healthy mouth, CoQ10 and propolis, the two nutrients that can destroy the bacteria in your mouth, stop periodontal disease, stop bleeding of the gums, and have healthy, healthy gums. I just had a gentleman tell me that he's from Europe, but he lives in the U.S. And his mother and his grandmother just visited them for several weeks. And the grandmother had a terrible oral cavity problem. Doctors were treating her with all kinds of different drugs. Nothing would help her periodontal disease. Her gums were bleeding. The gentleman gave the grandma CoQ10. And in less than a week, all of her mouth oral problems were gone. CoQ10 for both dogs and humans. With propolis. Propolis is a substance that's gathered, not made by the bees, but gathered by the bees from vegetation. The bees go out into the veg vegetarian area, <laughs> vegetarian area, the veg <laughs> well, anyway, where the, all the wonderful trees and shrubs and buds all grow, and they gather propolis. Actually, it's the polyphenols. The polyphenols are gathered by the bees. They bring it into the hive. They mix it with beeswax and saliva. And they make it into a bee glue or a putty. It's called propolis. P-R-O-P-O-L-I-S. CoQ10 and propolis are extremely valuable to prevent inflammation of the mouth, the oral cavity. And ideal for dental problems as both are, but together it's a perfect combination to be as an anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antibacterial. CoQ10 can help block bacteria from adhering to the teeth. In human clinical trials, CoQ10 plus routine dental care, improved pocket depth, and plaque buildup by a score of 15 to 20 percent over routine health care alone. If you go to the dentist and have your teeth cleaned, that's great. It does get rid of the buildup of plaque and does give you a nice, fresh, clean mouth. It just gets rid of the bacteria. But if you add CoQ10, it gives you 15 to 20 percent better care of the mouth than just the routine care alone. And, and, and propolis, the combination of the two, extremely valuable for both human and dogs. Now, there are pet products that contain CoQ10 and propolis, and then there are human products that contain CoQ10. Very, very excellent combinations. Exposure to prop propolis in both human and animal studies have been associated with reduced incidence of cavities, reduction in gingivitis, itis, always inflammation, and plaque buildup. This is a dynamite product for your dogs to take care of their mouth, and when you take care of their mouth, you're taking care of their heart. So keep your dog's mouth healthy. Ideally, I hope you are brushing your dog's teeth. 
Some like it, some don't like it. My dog hates it. It's a chore. But I make sure that I try to give her the CoQ10 and the propolis and make sure they have regular checkups. Remember, only use toothpaste for dogs. Don't use human toothpaste. Because human toothpaste, you may not be looking at your, your, your ingredients, but can contain xylitol, and xylitol is toxic to dogs. And it may contain other ingredients that are also toxic to dogs. Find a good dog toothpaste. And supplement, propolis and CoQ10 can actually keep your dog's mouth and teeth clean and healthy and minimize bad breath. Yep, dogs have bad breath too. Now give them about 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams of propolis and CoQ10 together. The combination. The combination of both propolis and CoQ10 at about 500 to 1,000 milligrams of the combination, not individually, but the combination, would be a good way to start cleaning your dog's breath, oral cavity, and taking the tartar off the teeth and gum line. Get rid of the inflammation. Now, here's how to protect against colon cancer. Diet. Diet will protect your body, your health, against all conditions. But many, many cancers are linked to your diet, what you eat and what you don't eat. And I've heard doctors tell their patients, when, they, when the patient said, doctor, what should I eat now that I'm taking chemotherapy? Oh, eat whatever you want. It doesn't make any difference. I've heard that often, frequently. And look at what they feed patients in the hospital. You know they don't get it. Many cancers definitely leak directly to your diet. But no cancer is linked to dietary choices as strongly as colon cancer. 55% of colon cancer cases are associated with lifestyle choices, including diet. And 35% of all colon cancers are directly linked to what you eat and to what you don't eat. So getting more fiber reduces the risk by almost 20%. And eating good meat has the ability to feed your body a very absorbable form of protein, give you a healthy dose of protein, and 10 vitamins and minerals. Between eggs and meat, you have 23 different vitamins and minerals. Far more than you would get from a combination of vitamins and fruits. For some reason, without any proof whatsoever, they have maligned meat. So the government says to eat less meat. Doctors say eat less meat. There is absolutely no proof whatsoever that scientific studies have proven that meat causes cancer. Now, forget cholesterol. It's our friend. We need it. It makes all of our hormones. It makes our vitamin D. It's the structure of all of our cells. But what is really dangerous are triglycerides. Triglycerides is a waxy fat that's produced from carbohydrates and sugar. And boy, we get a lot of those, a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of sugar. But also, what really is dangerous is C-reactive protein. But now, how important is cholesterol, really? Well, a new study of 28,000 American women in their 40s finds that cholesterol is not, not the most important indicator of heart disease. Should I say that again? 
they reviewed 28,000 American women in their 40s. And they found that cholesterol is not, is not the most important indicator of heart disease. Now, women with elevated levels of C-reactive protein, otherwise known as CRP, it's a marker of inflammation. It, it indicates how much inflammation is already in your body. Your doctor can do this for you. From a blood test, they can determine what your level of is for C-reactive protein, CRP. Now, this is a marker to determine how much inflammation your body has. Not only for your heart, everywhere. And they found that having 90% higher risk of heart disease and a heart attack if you have a high level of inflammation, inflammation, not cholesterol. With women with high levels of bad cholesterol had a 36% increased risk of heart disease. High levels of lipoprotein A, a type of fat found in the bloodstream, was associated with a 33% increased risk of heart disease. And then women who had elevated levels of all three markers had double the risk of heart attack and three to four times increased risk of a stroke. So it's not cholesterol. It's inflammation. And inflammation comes from being overweight. The fat cells produce inflammation. The more weight you carry, the more inflammation your body is making naturally. Now why would we want to make inflammation naturally? The heavier we are, the more inflammation we are producing. And when people lose weight, they feel better. They have less heart disease. They have less strokes. They have less type 2 diabetes. They have less inflammation. That means less arthritis, less pain. There's a reason, in fact, it's been proven that losing weight is probably one of the premier ways of getting healthier without making any other changes. Being overweight and the most damaging weight, the most damaging fat is, a, is associated with the abdominal cavity. Visceral fat. The fat that's within the abdominal cavity which shows you have belly fat or pot belly or beer belly or bread belly. All those things make you fat and in the uh, abdominal area. Many people have natural sized legs, but a big belly. That big belly is the most dangerous fat you can carry. Now, women who had elevated levels, elevated levels of all three markers had double the risk of a heart attack, three to four times increased risk of a stroke. This is what you want to shoot for. Lower your level of inflammation. And if you increase your good cholesterol and you lower your triglycerides, here's an interesting point. I just ran into a lady, and I tend to have people know who I am, so they want me, they want me to listen to their story. She just had all of her cholesterol and lipids tested. Her cholesterol was 230. Her bad cholesterol was around 50. Her triglycerides were 78. Her good cholesterol, the HDL, was 78. And the best way you can tell if you are having a problem from triglycerides is take the number of triglycerides, in her case 78, divide by the HDL, the good cholesterol by 78 in her case, and it has to be under 2. She was way perfect. But the doctor said, well, just in case, because your, your cholesterol is 230, and it should be down over 200. Hey, it used to be 300. Then it was 240. Now it's under 200. All they're doing is increasing the mass population 
that would then require a drug or a prescription. It's not anything to do with your health. Such a shame. And this woman was near perfect blood levels, the lipids in her blood levels, and they wanted her to take a drug. Now, you can reduce the C-reactive protein by using a combination of red sage, S-A-G-E, red sage, and red ginseng. Now, I've got more coming your way. Just hang on because I've got to take a break right here. We'll be back with more coming up right here on Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm Terry Naturally. Join me again right after these messages. And welcome back, my friends. Back with Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm Terry Naturally. We're here to the top of the hour. Got more coming your way. Lots more coming your way before we leave. And some very, very interesting com- combinations of nutrition to lower your CRP. C-reactive protein. It's a biomarker of how much inflammation is in your body. And inflammation is silent in many cases. So you can have an inflamed heart, inflamed liver, inflamed kidneys. You could be inflamed throughout your body and you wouldn't have a sign visibly that could tell you that, oh, I've got all these problems. No, there are silent killers. Either you can have your doctor tested, test for you, or otherwise you can just be sure that you are reducing the inflammation. And this can be done very significantly by reducing the CRP levels even just one week. After one week of taking red ginseng, many studies have shown that red sage along with red ginseng, also reduces C-reactive protein levels and protects against heart disease. Now here's a study. In a study looking at a combination of red ginseng and red sage, plus other traditional herbs in patients who had experienced a stroke. More than twice as many people in the placebo group experienced a second stroke versus the red sage group. And the red sage group saw their C-reactive protein levels decrease by 36%. So here's my advice, my recommendation. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to be any harmful things going on. There's no side effects. There's no adverse events. But I would recommend a combination of red sage about 100 milligrams of red sage and 100 milligrams of red ginseng up to three or four times daily. Very powerful for cardiovascular health overall. Better circulation. Less edema of the ankles and the calves. Better health overall. So take any combination of 100 milligrams of red sage and red ginseng up to four times daily. So here's another subject that I get a lot of questions regarding. I don't know why Parkinson's disease is, well, I hear more people asking me what they can do for Parkinson's disease. And I'm sure, first of all, I suggest them to see their physician for additional advice. But there is some research that I have uncovered when I went in to look at why I was, I, was, I was struck by the fact that I have had so many people recently ask me about Parkinson's disease. And it kind of leaves a clue. Why are people experiencing such a disease today? Well, there is an intestinal connection to Parkinson's. Unfortunately, for many years, doctors thought of Parkinson's disease as a top-down disease, meaning that changes in the brain, changes in the brain eventually spread to affect the intestines. Now, in a new study, researchers found evidence that Parkinson's disease is a bottom-up disease. That means changes in the intestinal function, the intestinal tract, 
are appearing well before the neurological symptoms. So it looks like this disease starts in the gut. So what does the gut have to do with it? Well, they analyzed health records from almost 10,000 patients, ages 50 to 64, with no history of Parkinson's disease, who underwent endoscopy using a long tube to look inside the throat and the intestines. 20 years ago, patients who had any kind of mucosal damage in their gastrointestinal tract, an ulcer, for example, inflammation, or a sore in their intestinal tract, 76% more likely to be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease later in life, as much as 15 years later. So damage in the intestinal tract caused them to have a disease called Parkinson's disease later in life. Sometimes disease takes a long time to raise its ugly head. Now, from this fact, researchers theorize that damage to the intestinal tract lining allows damaged proteins to be transported in the body and accumulate elsewhere, such as in the brain. The damaged protein can cross the blood-brain barrier, enter the brain, and damage brain cells, and therefore cause Parkinson's disease. But we can repair the damage to the intestinal tract if there's ulcers, if there's a sore, or if there's some damage to the intestinal tract, we can regenerate the intestinal tract. And one of the best nutritional supplements I've seen for strengthening the intestinal barrier is omega-7. Now, I'm sure you all know omega-6, maybe even omega-3 and 9, but this is omega-7. And it can build a stronger intestinal barrier and reduce ulcers or damage or sores in the intestinal tract. Omega-7 is a mucous membrane tissue regenerator. And what this means in scientific research Omega-7 from a berry called C. buckthorn berry and the oil that's excreted from the berry, not the seeds of the berry, but from the berry itself. C. buckthorn oil both protected the intestinal lining from damage and sped up the healing of the gastric ulcers, animal model of ulcers. In a comparison trial of gastric ulcer treatment, animal model, ulcers treated with oral C. buckthorn oil healed faster than ulcers treated with four different standard prescription drugs. This is a very, very excellent study. So you can repair the damage to the gastrointestinal tract. Now, you can use sea buckthorn oil, but make sure that you have the largest percentage of the berry because the oil is from the berry, not from the seeds of the berry. The seeds of the berry contain omega-3, 6, and 9. So you can actually find a sea buckthorn oil, primarily sold in a soft gel because it's oil, you can't put oil in a hard shell capsule in most cases. So you have to look for a soft gel capsule that contains a standardized extract of omega-7 content and make sure that it's from the berry, not just from the seeds. I've seen products sold in health food stores that says sea buckthorn seed oil. Well, that's nice, but it doesn't contain the omega-7. It only contains 3, 6, and 9. I shouldn't say only. That's great. 3, 6, and 9 is great. But if you're looking for the omega-7, which improves the mucus con concentration, 
and the health of the mucous membrane is omega-7. And you'd want to take about 500 milligrams up to three or four times daily of the omega-7. Make sure it's omega-7. Not from the seed, but from the berry itself. Now, there are some very common deficiencies everywhere. A lot of countries have different common nutrient deficiencies. But worldwide, there are common nutri nutrient deficiencies, which are global problems. In one of the largest studies of its kind, researchers in California estimated that the micronutrient intake for 99% of the world's population, they found four key nutrients that 60% or more of the people are lacking, no matter where they live, no matter what region, no matter what country, no matter what income. This was from a study from the world's population. There are four nutrients that are highly deficient in everyone. Iodine. Iodine is a mineral that supports the function of the thyroid. Iodine, along with selenium and L-tyrosine, selenium is another mineral, L-tyrosine is an amino acid found in most protein foods. So iodine, 68% of the people worldwide are deficient in iodine. Vitamin E for the heart health and as a very excellent antioxidant in the body. 67% of people were deficient in vitamin E. Calcium. 66% of people worldwide are deficient in calcium. And iron. Iron has gotten a bad rap over the years. Women are traditionally deficient in iron. But worldwide, 65% of people are deficient in iron. This was from a study, but I would also throw one in on my recommendation. Magnesium. Magnesium is deficient in as much as 80 to 90 percent of the people and only from region of the United States. I don't know the other countries. I didn't do a study on this. I, did, I looked at scientific studies of the U.S., and magnesium is highly deficient in the people of the U.S. So how do you correct this condition? Well, a good multivitamin and mineral supplement can help with nutrient gaps that are missing. The dosage is more than one per day. And the reason I say that is because most daily vitamins, that means one tablet daily, is not big enough, large enough, to hold the volume of all the vitamins and minerals we need on a daily basis. So if you took all the minerals that we, we require and all the other nutrients, and if you had those nutrients in your hand, it would look like you needed a golf ball size volume of those nutrients. Nobody can swallow that amount. But also, no manufacturer can put that same amount in a tablet, a single tablet. So you're getting short changed. If you're buying a daily vitamin, you're not getting all the vitamins and minerals you, you need on a daily basis. It's as simple as that. There's going to be shortages on all those vitamins and minerals because you can't put all the vitamins and minerals that our body requires in one tablet. A minimum is two tablets. So one tablet daily in the morning and one tablet daily in the, in the, in the evening. 
and then that contains a full range of vitamins and minerals at more than 100% of the RDA, the recommended daily allowance. And these nutrients are for everyone. You don't need age or gender specific formulas. Nutrients in their optimal forms for absorption and efficacy, bioavailability, absorption, they require active forms of B vitamins and chelated minerals. So look for a natural formula free of toxic ingredients. No BHT, which is a synthetic antioxidant to prevent oxidation of the, of the product. Avoid artif artificial colors, artificial flavors. I would say no, no, no gummies. They can't put enough vitamins and minerals in a gummy. And the junk that makes up a gummy is not worth consuming. Frequently contain sugar, high fructose corn syrup, and artificial colors. Low on vitamins and really low on minerals, especially iron. So look for a good daily supplement that requires you to take two tablets daily. Oh, I know you may balk. Oh, that means I've got to take two a day. I take one in the morning, one at night. Oh, I just want a one a day. I just want something simple. Well, you're not getting all your vitamins and minerals. I, I'm, not, I'm not challenging you to take two a day. But you can't take two dailies because that isn't built the same as a product that has all the vitamins and minerals in two a day. You can't take two dailies and make up for two tablets daily of a formulation that requires two tablets daily. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope it does. But you need more vitamins and minerals. Our food today does not contain the vitamins and minerals that we once thought. And even if they're good, healthy. There have been research on, in, on, on food that shows that when our great-grandparents ate an orange, they've got a certain level of vitamins and minerals and other nutrients from that orange. One orange. They did research today. And it would take eight oranges to equal the one orange that our great-grandparents ate. The nutrients are not in the food anymore. Food is not grown for nutrition. It's grown for money. And they'll do everything they can to make a, a more bountiful crop, but less nutritious. And they're not putting back things in the soil that they did years ago. Today, it's all artificial fertilizer. And it's spraying toxic poisons, pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, all the stuff that they spray on trees or on fruits and vegetables. They're toxic. There's thousands and thousands of chemicals that we come into contact with every day. Now, you want a good night's sleep? We all should get a good night's sleep. I hope you do. It's the only way we charge our bodies. Like we charge our, our phones. We plug our phones in at night, right? To recharge our phone. But we stay up all night. We don't charge our body. We should recharge our body. So they have done some research. They say night owls are always tending to get more diabetes. Night owls have higher risk of diabetes. Researchers in the Netherlands collected data from over 5,000 overweight adults looking at how body fat contributes to, to disease. When they looked at participants' sleep patterns, there was a significant difference between the night owls and the early birds. After following the participants for six years, the night owls had a 46% higher risk of diabetes versus those with earlier bedtimes. They also had one inch more visceral fat, that's the bad fat I was telling you earlier, 
that they find in the abdominal cavity. It's all the fat that's surrounded your organs and your glands. And it's the one that's most troublesome. Causes more heart disease, more disease, more strokes. And they find 14% more fat in their livers. One inch of fat in the abdominal cavity, 14% more fat in their livers. The researchers theorized that night owls, those who stay up all night playing games, watching TV, whatever, they may be eating more food. Well, if you stay up longer, you tend to binge more, you tend to snack more. And more food later in the evening has been shown to be previous from previous research that stop food intake early in the evening by stopping eating early in the evening reduces the risk of overweight and obesity by 53%. You're eating more food in the evening that contributes to being overweight or obese. So cut it off after dinner. Have an earlier dinner. Do not eat before you go to bed. Or if you go to bed, just before, have a small slice of cheese and a small handful of nuts. Proteins and fats will help you lose weight and keep you from binging, and keep you satisfied. But most people are eating carbohydrates, sugar, soft drinks, desserts, and all the pleasurable, pleasurable foods loaded with carbohydrates and sugar. Here's a question I get all the time. Should you keep olive oil in the refrigerator? And what does the science say about that? Well, yes, olive oil does stay fresher in the refrigerator, but also it gets cloudy and thick. You don't get a good measure out. I keep my olive oil on the kitchen counter, but my olive oil bottle doesn't last more than a week to eight or nine days. I go through a bottle in about eight or nine days. Now, they've done comparison studies of olive oil stored under different conditions. Plastic bottles exposed to light. Clear glass bottles are also exposed to light. Plastic bottles kept in darkness. Dark glass bottles kept in darkness. And one year later, the polyphenol content of the olive oil in dark glass stored in darkness, had declined by 10 to 15 percent. While the oil in the plastic bottle, exposed to light, had lost up to 65 percent of its potency. So what does that tell you? Buy olive oil in glass. Buy olive oil in dark glass. Not in a clear bottle. And oxygen can penetrate plastic bottles, not glass bottles. Exposure to oxygen makes oil go rancid faster, spoils faster. So should you keep your oil cold? I don't agree. I don't think you should. But also I think you should eat it more often, more frequently, and take care of it that you don't have a bottle lasting for months and months. It's a food, and you should take it every day. Repeatedly taking oil in and out of the refrigerator can stress it and actually doesn't extend the life or shelf life versus keeping oil in a dark glass in a dark place at room temperature. So I would, I, absolutely I would say, no to refrigeration. Do not refrigerate your olive oil. But don't keep it around for a long time either. And when you buy it, dark glass, and store it in a dark place of your cupboard. I keep mine on the countertop, but I go through a, a quarter of a cup to half a cup of oil a day. So if you tend to use it only once in a while, and you know, 
it, is, it has been classified by many, many experts that olive oil is the most potent food that we can consume on a daily basis. And we don't. The Mediterranean countries are healthy, healthy, healthy. And many experts say it's because they don't eat meat. No, it's because they drink olive oil. It's so high in polyphenols that it keeps your body in a healthy state. So no, don't keep your olive oil in a refrigerator, but buy it that you use it regularly. It is so good for you. And as Dr. Mary Flynn said, it can actually cure, reverse, and prevent every disease known to man. Now, that's not exactly the way she said it, but that's what she indicated. I just paraphrased it. I don't remember exactly what she said, but from one of her lectures, that's what I heard. It was a podcast. She has studied olive oil for over 30 years. She said it's the most potent food imaginable for good health. Well, my friends, I'm all out of time. I've got to run. I'm a, I'm a little bit over time. So I need to say goodbye to you today, but I'll be back again next week, same time, same station. So say a prayer for this crazy world. And God bless you, my friends. And God bless this great country. Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.